Hello, everyone. Uh, a warm welcome to all the participants uh, uh, to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Sanjay Kirimanjeshwar, uh, Head of Global Marketing at Amagi. I will be your moderator for today's session. Uh, for this webinar, all the attendees will be in listen-only mode. We will have a Q&A towards the end of the presentation. So please type in your questions in the chat window and we will answer them in the order we receive during the Q&A session. Over the years, broadcasters and content owners are trying to innovate, build their audience base, generate revenues, and optimize costs. Cloud Playout, OTT, VOD, localized content, pop-up channels, and addressable content are some of the trends that are capturing the imagination of the broadcast world. Amagi has been a technology leader in the area of cloud-based broadcast with deployments in over 40 countries. Our presenter for today's session on pop-up channels is someone who has actively led this technology transition from traditional to cloud. Bhaskar Subramanian is the co-founder of Amagi. A technology enthusiast, Bhaskar leads business strategy, investment, research and development at Amagi. Bhaskar, a warm welcome to you and over to you for the session. Hi, thank you, Sanjay. And uh, uh, good morning, good evening, folks, depending on which part of the region that you are dialing in. And uh, thank you very much for the interest for, uh, for this webinar. Uh, this is a pretty exciting topic for all of us. Uh, uh, Pop-up channel is a pretty interesting concept. And uh, with the new technologies and the uh, new ideas that are available today, and this is becoming more and more prevalent and interesting. And I think uh, I'm kind of looking forward to have a, a, an opportunity to share our experiences and thought process related to this whole creation of pop-up channels today. Uh, what's a pop-up, right? So that's a more important question for all of us to understand. Clearly, uh, these are nothing but linear content streams uh, from a uh, content streams that we are actually playing out to audiences on both traditional and an OTT platforms. So they are linear channels, just that the channels are either time bounded, it means the channels created only for a short period of time and uh, typical experiences in our own uh, understanding is either it's a 24 seven active uh, for at least a 15 to 30 days period, for example. So people create channels that are a couple of weeks away or a month sort of worth of channels that they create. The other interesting thing that we're seeing is it could be specific to a theme, a demographic, or a season or an event or an objective-driven approach. So people might do it for specific themes, specific events that are coming up. Or you could really focus on live events and around live events where you can actually schedule uh, either for a time of day, uh, only during prime time, or for specific uh, event opportunities in sports and in news, for example are interesting possibilities from a live pop-up capability perspective. We'll share some examples today, kind of uh, some of the experiences of these uh, capabilities and uh, when we talk about them in the later slides today. So why do pop-ups in the first place? Uh, so look at it, there are two uh, ecosystem partners who could leverage this much better. And clearly if you look at it, content owners are um, uh, have the biggest advantage. Obviously, uh, the fundamental premise of doing pop-ups is that it costs you lower than uh, to operate a pop-up than a complete linear channel. And that's, that's the fundamental premise that we all start off with from a pop-up standpoint. Uh, test marketing is a classic uh, advantage for content owners. You go into a new platform uh, or a new country or a new uh, geography and uh, you need to kind of understand customer preferences, uh, understand whether the, the interests of the customers match with the, the content, uh, co the content uh, uh, co quality as well as the, co the sort of the theme that you are actually discussing. It might be test marketing is an interesting concept. You can trial your content maybe for a month or a 15 days, gauge interest in those geographies, use it as a marketing tool, for example, and be able to do it, either for even for promotional purposes. So you could create promotional as, uh, content where you create a buzz about a specific content or a soap or an event, for example. So that's one another way to do this as well. 
the other uh, interesting aspect is also from an event standpoint. So it could be around an event, and uh, this could be either sports or news events that are that's coming up, and you can automatically be able to address that as well. And uh, from a content owner standpoint, it's an exciting proposition because now you can do short-term, interesting content specifically either for promotion or testing a marketplace or for on-demand events which which need a special interest in their audience, niche audience around it. So look at it from an operator standpoint or an affiliate or a platform standpoint, uh, even for them, pop-ups are a very interesting possibility, right? Uh, business feasibility. So before you sign up, a content owner or a content publisher or a TV channel onto your platform, you could uh, get them to kind of trial the content before paying them subscription grab shit. You could gauge the interest of your consumers and audiences that you have on your platform before you can actually enable the channel. So you could tell the channel, let's do a pop-up, let's do it for 30 day period, understand consumer preferences and interest from our customers before you do it, for example. So operators could leverage this as a tool to, from a business feasibility standpoint. Second is you could do promotions. Uh, when you talk about promotions, it's special content or events uh, that you already have, which could reduce your customer churn and maintaining our uh, Fundamentally, if you look at it from a traditional platform or even an OTT platform standpoint, the biggest challenge is reducing customer churn and maintaining our Now you have a powerful tool where you could create pop-ups, which could enable you to uh, keep interest, bring in niche specific content, which can kind of add value to your platform uh, without creating newer and newer channels or, uh, or content channels that you, you need to bring in, but you can bring in specific uh, pop-ups which are active for very, very short periods of time, which can give you a bump in terms of reducing churn or even maintaining or increasing your output depending on the regions where you are. The other interesting stuff is if you look at it from an OTT platform standpoint, uh, this is a big challenge in OTT platforms today uh, because of the amount of content behind those experiences, user experiences and interfaces that we have today. Because of the amount of hours of content behind what platforms today are OTT platforms, the biggest challenge is in terms of being able to discover content. So one of the interesting themes that we're seeing from multiple platform owners and uh, who have access to content and thousands of hours of content is to be able to create uh, kind of a linear streams as a mechanism of uh, either recommendation or content discovery by customers. And this is exciting because you could specifically do it for uh, a special set of what content or for everything together. So you can do many, many different ways to address that, right? And uh, the other aspect is really the thematic channels. Yeah, you can create specific themes, again, for an OTT provider or even for a platform, uh, traditional platforms, you could recycle your existing what content that you already have in some sort of calendarized uh, thematic streams, for example. Uh, this could be uh, for many different purposes. It could be for a start of a, a new uh, movie, for a move, new season of award uh, uh, soap that's coming up. And you can do mechanisms that you could try to create a binge watching model or otherwise. You can do both of that. So now let's look at some of the examples of this whole thing, right? So it's easier to understand uh, how to do that from an example standpoint. Uh, uh, so take, for example, niche interests, content interests, right? Uh, for example, Sky has done a very interesting uh, stuff called Ocean Rescue. This talks about anything related to the uh, rescue of, uh, or kind of rescuing from the oceans in terms of all the pollution that we're doing, for example. This is a very, very niche interest, uh, but interestingly, Sky has been able to pop, put, in, put together a pop-up channel there. Only for that specific capability, for example. Uh, similarly, if you look at it, Kids is an interesting channel. Where Turner, for example, ran a Tom and Jerry channel uh, during summer, only for kids. So it's really a collection of Tom and Jerry content, which actually is run only for summer, for example. Take, for example, uh, movies, for example. The classic, you could, when OSN and Disney, for example, have come together and created a movie pop-up channel only for a specific duration. Sports is very interesting and obviously one of the, the most successful platforms that have tried it is uh, the Discovery Eurosport platform, which has done the Winter Olympics, for example. A lot of that, uh, it's pretty exciting to see the number of pop-up live events that they could cover only for a brief period of time during the Winter Olympics and being able to tear it down. So that's a pretty interesting uh, area that we need to explore from a sports standpoint. 
And obviously for soaps, uh, an example could be like you could take one of your uh, soaps and create a binge watching channel prior to a new season, which is a way to kind of increase the, the, the sort of uh, people coming, population coming into your platforms. So that these are some of the specific ways that where you can actually address it. Uh, from a uh, example standpoint, what are the sort of channels that you could potentially do? So look at it from an ROI standpoint in terms of economics and how is this going to work out, right? Um, what we're seeing is key for a pop-up ROI is uh, fundamentally on-demand infrastructure and resources. It's, it's critical that a pop-ups do not work in a static linear channel environment where the large part of the problem is that uh, the whole infrastructure and the, and the resources are being allocated for a, for a year-round, 24-7 play-out sort of capabilities. Pop-ups need a very different thought process, very different infrastructure from a technology standpoint, uh, which is kind of fast bring up and tear down. So you don't want it to be, you want it to be cost effective. And the only way to get cost effective is the, the infrastructure and the resources are on demand, you have mechanism to bring it up and tear it down much faster from an infrastructure and business process standpoint. And uh, typically, if you have good planning in terms of pre-approvals, in terms of agreements with the platform, with the technical integrations, it makes your life much, much simpler. It reduces the management of the technical resources and bandwidth we need to be able to address this. So that's the biggest advantage of uh, uh, the pop-up. But it, it needs a different thought process, a different set of infrastructure and capabilities to accomplish this in the, in the most cost-effective fashion. Now to look at it, uh, one of the fundamental parts to making this a successful platform is uh, the core playout needs to be what we call an on-demand playout. A playout which can be uh, brought up and uh, tear down whenever we're completing with a, with a particular duration, for example. This is a critical part of the infrastructure because it helps us to uh, then create pop-ups on demand and create it in a, in a very economical fashion. And that's, we think, is the heart, the heart of uh, the implementations of any sort of pop-ups. We see this as a very critical part of the whole um, economics of how this works. Now, if you look at it, uh, take a playout on demand, right? So cloud playout is a very interesting uh, mechanism to address pop-ups because it allows you to spin up a channel on demand and uh, bring it out. And give thanks to cloud infrastructure that's available today, you could purchase a server on the cloud, on demand, only for a 15-day or 30-day period. Or if you're only doing it in prime time, lease that only for a prime time for a few hours, spin up a complete channel, run the channel, tear it down again, and then do it whenever you need to do it. Essentially, uh, uh, the cloud platform is an on-demand platform is very, very uh, uh, relevant in the pop-up context, because it suits the business process and the needs that we need from a, a playout standpoint. And this is an example of a system, right? This is a, a Margate cloud port system in a pop-up scenario, for example. It's typically, uh, we acquire your content, uh, ingest it on the cloud, and once the schedules come into your system, uh, there's a virtual playout, which is nothing but a software playout infrastructure, which is running on a virtualized platform, in this scenario, it's running on a cloud infrastructure. It's you buy a new server, lease a server only for that particular time period. It spins it up, brings the virtual playout. You pipe the content or stream the content to multiple affiliate platforms uh, on an IP stream, either through protected streams like RTMP or Zixi or an LTN or many different capabilities that's available today to be able to do a protected uh, FEC and uh, error corrected as well as secure streams which hits the affiliate platforms directly. This is a great way to start because it's, it's much, much lower cost than creating a full 24-7 feed. It's completely on demand, very lends itself to this business process very, very effectively. So this is one, uh, one of the uh, interesting ways to do it. There are scenarios, for example, where uh, we have had customers who come and say, okay, you know what, I'm going to a large traditional platform. This could be the likes of Sky or Dish TV or any of the larger platforms across the globe. And the moment you're going to go through those large platforms, it's critical that we are able to uh, provide a very reliable feed. And obviously, you cannot afford uh, a fiber or a satellite for a pop-up. It just doesn't make sense. So how do you kind of address a high reliable environment where you need to provide the channel? At the same time, you don't want to spend a lot of money. 
what uh, what Amagi has come up with, and I'm sure you can do it in many different ways, is an edge platform architecture. Uh, what we mean by that is you play it out on the edge uh, on an affiliate platform. So let's take an example of a Dish TV or a Sky, for example. You could, on the data center of the platform, uh, you have the playout devices, which are called edge playout devices sitting there. Uh, you see that on the right-hand side of the screen here. And uh, you have the content which has been sucked into the cloud through an ingest process. You're sitting on the buckets on the cloud. All of the processes in terms of quality checks and all the automation is on the cloud. And this drives the playout platforms, uh, playout on the platform or the affiliate platform directly. And the stream is handed off securely, uncompressed, uh, in the, the highest quality, and the most reliable quality that's available onto the platform directly. So this is one approach. Obviously, this approach is slightly expensive than the cloud, the typical cloud playout approach because it needs infrastructure on the edge from a technology, from a hardware standpoint. And, uh, but, but it delivers the highest quality. And for large premium platforms, this is a great way to test it. One thing to note here as well, if you look at it, is because it's a cloud-based workflow that you have here, the advantage is you could uh, have your content store um, anywhere across the globe from where you could push your content from the cloud, and you can have your schedules from a completely different premises where the schedulers are actually doing the scheduling of the of the, the playout itself in this particular capability, for example. So that's one, one architecture. So I'm giving you two extreme architectures which we have seen our customers look at. One is a complete cloud playout architecture, very simple, complete on demand, switch of a button, it's a complete software-driven approach. Second is for premium large traditional platforms where you don't, you don't want to afford any sort of reliability challenges. You go for a complete edge-based approach, which gives you the, the best in class quality as well as capabilities that, uh, that you need from a full-fledged player platform. Those are the two extremes that uh, I'm just proposing here just from a presentation standpoint. What's the other thing interesting is, if you look at it, uh, the cloud playout does not mean that you only do thematic content. Uh, we do believe strongly that if you look at pop-ups, sports is an interesting capability from a pop-up standpoint, because we're seeing an evolution of a lot of mid-tier mid sports content, uh, either it's regional or county-specific or state-specific uh, sports or niche sports events that are starting to happen across the globe. So we see uh, uh, a lot of interest of covering them at a seasonal level. So for a particular season that you want to kind of spin up channels and being able to do that only for that particular period and then spin it down completely. Uh, this is an interesting uh, uh, times in that particular capability. And obviously we have solutions. I'm, I'm showing you an architecture of where we have solutions which allows us to take the live source onto the cloud and you're able to orchestrate those live source with graphics and ad, ad insertions and capabilities thereof and then eventually deliver to an affiliate platform. Uh, this is again very interesting for news and sports sort of capabilities. Uh, this is something that we see interest as well of being able to do something dynamically on demand from an economic standpoint, very interesting again, without running a full channel. To kind of, uh, kind of elaborate that particular point, to look at it from an orchestration standpoint, uh, today technology exists where you could get your live streams captured in your camera directly into a, a, a switch fabric, which is on the cloud, which can take in advertising recorded content and put everything together, including live graphics, and create a complete channel and deliver it along with highlights and reruns and the live event. So you can really create a 24 seven uh, season, which has both the live uh, during the CL, during the live event, and then all the reruns and highlights are getting created and uh, put together and stitched into a complete channel. So these are interesting possibilities which did exist earlier. Now with new technologies and with the cloud infrastructure that's available, these are all becoming reality today. And this is just to give you a screenshot of how typical live orchestration could be done on the cloud, where you could even do ad insertions and graphics capabilities, everything on a, on a, on a almost on an on-demand basis. You, you're creating only for that particular time, and then the service is, is kind of uh, blown away the moment the event is completed or that time period of the pop-up is completed, for example. That's the biggest advantage of this particular capability that we see here. look at it, one part of the problem is the playout, which we addressed. 
And uh, as I told you, there are two classes of problems. One is the cloud playout aspect, and we talked about the edge playout as well. We talked about live and how orchestration of live is also becoming an on-demand capability. So you don't spend millions of dollars creating large sports platforms, but you can actually do it for really low-end or mid-end sports capabilities without spending a lot of money, for example, only on an on-demand basis. So that's the advantage from what's happening today. But if you look at from business process automation on creating a pop-up, obviously efficiency matters a lot. If you're trying to run it only for a 15 day, 30 day period, a lot more things have to be thought through from a business process uh, automation perspective because we want to reduce and eliminate manual effort. You cannot afford to have people involved in a lot of the processes that's involved so that your pop-ups are very economical at best. The automation on all of this uh, helps a lot in being able to create uh, much more economical solutions. And uh, these are some of the thoughts process that I'm arguing that's what we have kind of uh, leveraged. We want to share those experiences of what we've been able to see. The first part is obviously the ingest part. You could automate your ingest process very efficiently so that your content is on the cloud and in a complete automated fashion without you uh, manually looking at it. But that's an easier part of the problem. So look at the larger part of the problem we see is, is the scheduling of the channel. Uh, I cannot afford to have a, a scheduler uh, available for me for just for a 15 to 30 day period if we're going to run a, run a schedule only for that pop-up channel and then bring it down. So how do I handle this sort of resourcing, for example? Uh, what at Amagi we've kind of shared, uh, done, and just a kind of interesting experience for us, is created what's called an automated scheduling of the channel. So it's, it's as simple as when you start a pop-up, you just initialize your schedule, you give a basic understanding of all your content assets, you tell us what sort of program segments that you have, you create a break slot scenario of saying, hey, this is the number of breaks and this is sort of promotions and advertising that I want to do. And voila, the whole system will take over, create a complete auto schedule of the whole thing for the next 15, 30 day period automatically. That means here without minimal or very, very less human effort in the initial phase, you are able to now generate a complete play out automated playlist that's needed for the next 15 to 30 day period without having to touch any of your systems. Uh, very, very relevant in the pop-up scenarios because you don't want to be spending a lot of time creating specialized schedules or events or changes. You want to do it completely automated. So we've thought through these issues and created what's called an automated scheduling, largely because pop-ups are very, lend very well for these sort of capabilities, for example. And not only with this, right? So if you look at it, even in a pop-up, you want to run it like a full-fledged channel. It means uh, you need uh, all the bells and whistles in terms of a broadcast grid play out. You want graphics, you want the dynamic graphics, you want all the DV effects that we want to look at. And uh, good news in all of this is this can also be automated. So you don't need humans to kind of do all of this, right? Two parts. So obviously, you can automate the graphics elements and the variables that get into the web, graphics elements so that it's auto-generated. But more importantly, uh, we've kind of thought through issues where you can even schedule automate the, the graphics themselves. The advantage is take an example here, right? So I'm just showing you an example of, uh, let's say, Cadbury uh, Ashton Band. It's available. It says that this Ashton Band has to be played uh, on all segments of all content three times. It's as simple as this. This is one simple rule that I'm kind of demonstrating it here for you. The beauty of this is now the system will automatically schedule it every three times in every ad asset that, that's every content asset that's getting played. You don't need to touch your schedule. You don't have playlists to be managed and command. Nothing happens. So you can actually schedule this and be done with this whole thing. So these are thought through automation because then your pop-ups become much, much more economical at best without having, if you look at the total cost of running an operation, then it becomes much, much lesser because there's no human element involved. Once you kickstart the pop-up, you don't need to really have any of the scheduling capabilities uh, beyond the first day of operations where you actually run the, uh, you kind of planned your schedules, you planned your automation rules that you want, and then the system can take over. For example. This is one thought process there. Um, obviously, there are other aspects to consider. Some of the aspects is EPG, for example. Um, operators need program guides for even for pop-up channels because it's critical for them to be able to advertise both from a promotional standpoint, as well as from uh, ability to provide this capability to consumers as part of the EPG process from an operator standpoint. 
So generating auto EPG is a critical part of the whole thing. You, you're not going to have people manually creating EPG just for the pop-up, for example. So we're trying to make all of this simpler and easier so that you can actually get it done. And there are also measurement considerations to address. Uh, obviously, in a traditional platform, uh, it's very extremely hard to kind of get a Nielsen rating or a, or some sort of a media metric rating if it's in the European context to do that or a TAM rating in the Asian context. Uh, but in OTT, uh, there are interesting possibilities where you can get back channel analytics, which kind of tells you the engagement levels uh, that you have on these channels, which kind of helps you to plan better, uh, understand if you have the platform running it, you also understand the ROI of uh, what sort of interest levels in a new season or a new ward asset, what content that you're going to expect. So you can do a lot more analytics on top of it if you're able to address it. So if you look at it from a pop-up automation standpoint, these are some of the thought process to really think through. We talked about graphics, we talked about scheduling of the regular playlist, and we talked about EPG and the whole measurement aspects as well. Like any other channel, it's critical that we're able to monitor and uh, handle the whole control of the MCR aspects of the whole thing as well. Uh, there are many, again, these are all thought through aspects to look at, right? Automated alert systems. So you do not want, you want a lightweight processes and see to it that your, your pop-up channels are running comfortably as, as smooth as what you'd like to see. So typically uh, what we have done is really look at experiences through automation again. So automated alert systems, uh, look ahead play out is a very interesting model where if you're thematic pop content, you could technically create the playlist, create the graphics and all of that and run the whole play out ahead of time. So you already played out the content on the schedule that you have and validated that there are no errors from a playout standpoint. Essentially, this dramatically reduces the number of errors in the field or even brings it to zero depending on uh, the complexity of the channels. That, that's, that's an interesting possibility that could be enabled, for example. Obviously, there are the basics in terms of PPR economics efforts. It. You could do on-air monitoring and uh, I think this basic infrastructure monitoring is critical for any of the channels that uh, you run, even if it's including a pop-up. The idea is to really create a, a model, both from a business process and from a technology standpoint, where you're able to create broadcast grade, uh, world-class channels, linear channels, which are as good as a 24-7 channel, just that they are pop-up channels created on demand and tear down. So that's, that's, the, that's the kind of objective that we go back to. And obviously you want to do the economics of a pop-up channel and not at a uh, at an extreme expense, which is unaffordable from a business standpoint and ROI standpoint. Other interesting aspects to look at from a monetization standpoint, pop-ups need not only be for promotion and for test marketing, but it could also be uh, where you could explore uh, monetizing these pop-ups. And some of the interesting thoughts that uh, we've seen from our customers and from the conversations that we've had is obviously co-branding of channels. A uh, channel could be co-branded either between the operator and the content publisher, or it could be between uh, an advertiser uh, to a specific content, to a content theme that you have, for example. And uh, that, that's one where you could create a complete channel, it's co-branded, uh, the, the logos are changed, the graphics is all related to the co-branded uh, content, and that's what's in one interesting way to engage, uh, very given immersive experience both with the advertiser and uh, that, that's kind of a way to monetize the channel. Second interesting aspect that we've seen is in terms of sponsored advertising. Uh, Pop-ups kind of lend way to a couple of innovations which are pretty interesting. One is obviously, if it's thought through well, in-content placements could be interesting. And obviously, that depends on the feasibility and the regulations that you might have in different geographies as well as the rights that you have in the content. But that, that kind of lends itself to a very interesting and creative ways to address it. Um, that's one way to do that. Second interesting aspect is because it's not a 24-7 regular linear channel for the whole year round, it lends to uh, where we create infomercials, where the long-form infomercials that you could do. So you don't need to get uh, kind of blocked into a 30-second window, but you could create interesting uh, kind of content which are infomercials which are much more longer. This could be like three-minute content or even 15-minute content depending on different sponsors and interests which are related to it. For example, we've had this sort of conversations with automotive companies on auto channels and motor, motor channels, for example, where uh, advertisers would like to kind of get labeled 
with content which are which are both an infomercial at, at best and yet relevant to the audiences of choice for example so that's one way to kind of address it and we've seen some interesting possibilities here from a uh, for the pop ups this is a very exciting simple possibility to be able to monetize as well so the other thought process and again this is something that lots of our customers have also talked to us saying can we plan for pop ups year round and that's an important thing to look at right uh, pop up is either a singular event or a trial that you do or as a content publisher you might think it's a strategy that i want to follow and i want to follow it across my whole of my calendar year for example uh, it comes in multiple forms right so if you want to do that it's important that we plan ahead of time because planning makes a big difference in terms of the economics of how you run pop ups more the pop ups you run better will be the business processes that you can address much earlier on so what we see is obviously planning with operators and sponsors uh, if it's a monetized uh, pop up is critical and uh, that's that's very critical for you to look at it second we see is really uh, reduce cost per pop up because the moment if you do and again uh, we've had uh, where customers have asked something okay can i do eight channels a year eight pop ups a year uh, which kind of an interesting possibility and eight pop ups could be in different platforms same platform different content different themes you could do many different ways to do it so once you do that you can kind of plan the whole infrastructure accordingly <coughs> and uh, obviously it enables us to do faster bring up and tear down processes so you kind of set all the processes schedule the pop ups calendar ahead of time then lot more efficiency both in terms of cost timeline and resources can be addressed for example so this is one uh, possibility to look at it. and the specifics of how you really go about planning right from an infrastructure standpoint and these are something some are experience from our customers is you do what's called a drip feed of your content to the cloud it means your content ingest process which is one of the most time consuming process when you really start a pop up is already getting done ahead of time you essentially uh, take your content and start trickling it the content onto the cloud and either it has to be transcoded or kept in the native format all of those complexities from a content standpoint is pre addressed even before the pop ups just going to come alive this saves a lot of time a lot of effort and ultimately costs over time if you're able to do that if more planning and better planning could help us to do that sort of capabilities that you drip feed the content the second aspect is you could lease to the platform and operators the rack infrastructure that you need so technically let's assume you go to a platform and you want to run let's say eight pop ups a year on that particular platform you plan it ahead of time with the operator and the platform you could technically uh lease the rack put a device there on the edge and keep it ready and spin it up with content whenever you need it and spin it back again the economics works pretty well if you're doing more than one pop up of course that that's a critical thing to do that so that's one way to kind of plan it ahead of time and do a better job third part is obviously promotion scale up uh, scheduling and planning for example uh, how do you do cross promotion because it's important that when a pop up comes up it is promoted quite well both from an operator standpoint as well as from a publisher standpoint or the broadcaster standpoint so how do you kind of market a pop up has to be planned ahead of time uh, because the viewership and the excitement around a pop up can be really built up uh, much better uh, if the operator and the player and the publisher plan ahead of time and be able to do that we've seen really good success stories of our customers trying to do that ahead of time and being able to do that so i, I strongly believe and recommend that if people look at pop ups on a year as a year round activity you really plan a calendar ahead of time get your content to the cloud much ahead of time through a drip model you lease the infrastructure if it's going to be in an edge or if it's a cloud no problems it gets spun up any time we want so that's critical that we can do and then you kind of look at a pop up with pro promotion and schedule and planning is done ahead of time so resourcing and the schedule everything is kind of planned ahead of time so that is the critical thing to look at as well and coming back uh, and again uh, If you look at it uh, from our experiences, what I've been sharing with you is uh, we've kind of built all of this in what we call as a CloudPort pop-up platform. It's one of its kind cloud managed platform. It's an end-to-end, thought-through platform. Exactly what I told you are the experiences that we've had with our customers. So it's an end-to-end -end managed service. It's a play-out infrastructure that's uh, that's been built for these sort of capabilities. It leverages the state-of-the-art CloudPort, which is one of the uh, one of the largest cloud play-out play platforms in the world today in terms of number of installations that we have today. So it's on the same platform, but just kind of shrink-wrapped for a very limited time frame. 
the business process and tech infrastructure design for rapid deployment because that's critical. As I talked about the automation of scheduling, I talked about graphics, how do you handle EPG generation, how do you manage monitoring, all of those capabilities and automations and business processes are very critical from an economic standpoint to run these capabilities. So rapid bringing up and bringing down these infrastructure is a critical part of the planning cycle. And uh, CloudFord pop-up is something which Amagi has built with these thought process in mind. And uh, obviously, it's built with no compromises. Uh, that essentially means it's broadcast phase, channel play out with all the bells and whistles in terms of graphics and surround sound, multi open audio tracks, everything that you could think of in a broadcast playout is available, just that it's for a small time window, which kind of meets your needs, comes in. That, that, that's what uh, CloudPort pop-up does today for you. And obviously we've delivered this across multitude of platforms worldwide, both in terms of the OTT operators, the traditional operators, large platforms, uh, in more than 40 plus countries. So this, this, this um, uh, wide swath of operators who are already covered in these sort of capabilities, both either as an RTMP streams from a cloud play out or on Zixi feeds or on Edge, for example, on Dish TV or, or on Sky platform, for example. So all of those capabilities are available. So what we've done is to really kind of share, uh, in summary, the whole idea of a pop-up, uh, how the pop-ups, why do we need a pop-up? What are the advantages from a content operator standpoint? What's the advantage for the operators? How do you go about creating an infrastructure which allows us to be able to address it in a fast turnaround time frame? Which essentially means the core playout has to be on demand, which we talked about. Then we talked about all the business processes which allows us to schedule, uh, be it graphics and uh, playlists, everything automatically so that you reduce the full manual effort needed. And we talked about how to plan for a whole year round capability, which means which allows us to kind of expand the whole capabilities for a whole complete year. And uh, I've presented what, what the market does in this particular capability from an experience standpoint. Um, that's essentially what I have for today, folks. And uh, any sort of questions, more than happy to answer. Thank you, Bhaskar. Thank you for those insights. Uh, I think uh, during the initial part of the session, some of the technical glitches popped up and some of uh, the audience members couldn't see the slight transition. So, for all those of you who could not see the slide transition, our sincere apologies. Uh, we will make the original slides available to you along with the recording, uh, so you'll be able to catch up on the initial content that uh, Bhaskar had presented. Uh, we have received a, a few set of questions and we will take them in order of priority. Um, if you have more questions, uh, so please send it to us uh, on the chat window and we will bring them to Bhaskar uh, as per the queue. Um, Bhaskar, the first question uh, we have is, um, it's okay that you, you're going to launch pop-up channels, but uh, how do you monetize these pop-up channels? So what's the strategy, what's the, the secret behind uh, monetizing channels? I think uh, we touched about that in this part of our, uh, the seminar today in, uh, from a webinar perspective, is obviously uh, advertising and sponsorship is one option. But it's not the regular advertising model but really a, a sponsorship sort of model. It means you, you get a couple of sponsors across the whole event uh, for the whole time frame, either through a co-branding of a complete channel, which is very interesting and exciting for a lot of advertisers, or you do in-content placements, which is again another possibility, and, and kind of customize the channel along with the conversation with sponsor and advertiser. That's one mechanism of doing it. The other obviously is if it's between the operator and the publisher, there are ways where the operator might be able to pay you a subscription revenue, depending on the interest and the content choices that you have, for example. So those are two ways to uh, monetize it. If you're not looking to use it as a promotion tool or for any other capability thereof, these are two ways to address it. Sure, sure, thanks. I think another follow-up question to this is, um, what would be the optimum number of hours of content that you require to run a pop-up channel for a month? That's a good question, right? So uh, we've had uh, uh, kind of this discussion across, which is all over the map in some sense. We've had customers who said, okay, I have 30, 40 hours of content and I can run a 15 day, 30 day sort of a pop-up. That's one set of customers. Obviously live is a very different ball game altogether. Uh, so you can go as low as I believe is about 20 hours of content, 30 hours of content is a good start. Okay. Uh, obviously, if you have 
fresh, more and more fresh content, you engage the same audience again and again on an everyday basis. Rather than if you repeat the content more and more, then you're going to have different set of audiences, but the same audience is never going to be engaging with your channel. Okay. It depends on the objective that you're trying to accomplish. If your objective is to engage multiple different audiences on a different day basis, then a, a small set of content, we believe 20 to 30 hours is a good start. That's what I think is a good start. It okay. could depend on what you want to accomplish further on, from there on. Sure, sure. Thanks. Uh, there are a few questions on um, on Cloudport. Um, let me just um, bring that up. Um, is it possible to integrate uh, emergency alert system uh, for U.S. customers with Cloudport? Because they you covered Cloudport pop-up, uh, so there's a question yeah, on the absolutely, right? It's part of the, the graphics capabilities that you could have an EAS, or an emergency alert capability, as part of a, a, a real-time system that we do have. So on your browser interface, you open up a real-time graphics button, click on it, you can type in your message, and it automatically comes on the screen. Yes, we do. Okay. Um, this is an interesting question, and since uh, you did cover about uh, cloud playout and edge playout options for uh, pop-up channels, uh, but how do you decide whether to which one to go in for? Is the question. Good question, and again, uh, it depends on multitude of factors. Obviously, the first thing that to worry about is the economics of the pop-up that you do, and to the platform or the affiliate that you're going to really terminate on. These two determine the sort of the, uh, the decision choices you make. What we've seen is uh, a lot of the pop-ups could be done on the cloud playout directly today. Yeah, in today's day and age, in terms of all the IP connectivity that's available, uh, if I'm in Europe or in the, in the US, I would uh, safely do it on the cloud and stream it into the platforms directly. Thanks to technologies like Zixi and LTN and, and many, many mechanisms of reliable transportation on the public internet, I think it's a very reliable option. Okay. If I'm in Asia and other places, or I'm going to an extremely large platform and I cannot afford to have any sort of reliability challenges, even for a uh, single frame of uh, video, then you really go for an edge playout. And if you're going for a longer term from a year-round planning capability, edge playout is the way to go okay. for some of the large platforms that you do. But that's an economic decision as well as the timeline decision that you need to make. Sure, sure. Um, another question is, um, is this uh, ATAC 3.0 compliant? And does the pop-up support uh, 4K content? Okay, uh, it is ATSC 3.0 compliant. Uh, 4K is not supported on the pop-up right now. Uh, it's about in our roadmap. Uh, we are about two quarters away from supporting it. As as that. We do not okay. have it right now. Okay. okay. It's HD today. HD ready. Okay. Um, so can this be used for pay-per-view events? Is the next question we have. That's an interesting point to look at, right? So, um, uh, obviously, yes, that's possible. Uh, this is a clear uh, playout capability. You could play it out, and an operator or a platform could choose to enable it on a pay per view basis. Obviously, the pay per view infrastructure and how you want to get the subscribers to do that is outside the realm of the playout itself, but this could be done by the operators. Either it could be OTT operators or the traditional operators on that platform, exactly the way they would do pay per view of other channels. They could do it on the play out uh, for these uh, okay. capabilities as well. And that could be interesting for a lot of uh, customers who are looking to monetize, not through advertising, but through some sort of subscription or pay per view model, okay. is a way to go as well. Okay, okay sure. Uh, this is a question on uh, Cloudport uh, deployments. Uh, what are the US locations of your Cloudport platform and globally? Okay, so as we said, we go to a multitude of platforms and uh, we go to, um, as I told you, more than 40 countries that we cover. There are, the distribution into the platforms are through many different ways. One is, uh, as I told you, it could be an edge directly on the platform. Take for example, Dish TV uh, in the US or an ATN in Canada, you could directly go to those platforms without having to have any sort of a hub from a distribution standpoint. And there are locations like Twitch and YouTube, so the world, and all of the digital first companies on the, and the, well, what we call, uh, we enable a lot of the post cable networks to reach the virtual MVPDs. And that's through an IP system which connects to them, either through RTMP, HLS, or any of the other distribution marks. So we're fairly connected in all of these geographies, and we could share the list offline to all the platforms that we support. Sure, sure. Um, I think you mentioned about uh, the analytics part um, with respect to uh, Twitch and other VMPDs. 
Uh, there's a related question here. Um, are there interactive feature available that would allow an operator to know content was being interacted with that is actually viewed that some sort of a link tracking? Okay. Uh, basically, because it's a, it's, a, it's a broadcast stream that's delivered to an operator. Uh, today, for example, in the platforms like Twitch, and again, an example of Twitch is an example that we picked up here, is enables us to get back per minute viewership okay. uh, of how many people and what sort of demographics that is watching the channel on a linear basis. So this is a, a pretty interesting information from an analytics standpoint where you can map it back to the EPG, EPG of your programming and identify what sort of uh, interest levels on different content and who watched it, how much. So it's a, it's a fairly that's how capability exists already. Okay. And okay. platforms, if it's an OTD platform or if it's an any sort of IP enabled platforms and there are back channels, a lot of these platforms have already capabilities to do that. And we have plums to enable us to extract that permanent information and map it back to demographics. Mm -hmm. That's what okay. okay. Thank you. Um, a couple more questions uh, coming our way. Um, any indicative cost comparison for Pure cloud, hybrid cloud, and old-fashioned playout. Uh, good question. I'm, I'm trying to uh, avoid a pricing question. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, you know, as a moderator, I have to bring these questions okay. to you. As, as I'm trying to avoid the pricing cloud. question, not because I don't want to answer the question. If you ask me, I'm giving you a, a macro perspective, and then we can get into some of the details. It's typically a, a pop-up channel. Roughly, would cost you about. Anywhere from 10 to 15 percent of your traditional linear playout okay. for the whole year. Okay. Okay. And that's kind of a ballpark indication from sure. percentage standpoint. Sure. And uh, explicitly, I'm talking about percentages and not numbers because the feature sets, the capabilities, the, the, the resolutions, the platforms that you go to determine the playout cost. Okay. It's not just about a playout, but playout plus distribution plus what sort of services you want on top, what sort of feature sets that you want. So if you take 100 percent of your cost. For a 24/7 channel, you want to run it for the whole year. You could just assume it's about 10 to 15 percent is the cost of a pop-up for a typical 15-day to 30-day period. Okay. That's that's kind of a ballpark good assumption to start off with from an economic standpoint. Okay. I don't know if I hope to answer the question, but that's, that's something that I think. Okay, is, fair enough. So I think gives a good perspective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the other question we have is, um, what is your underlying program environment? Is it Linux, NV, etc.? Okay, uh, I think uh, okay. We are we are a Linux house, so all of that's running on a lot of open source software. So uh, it's, it's and it's all inbuilt technology. Uh, the beauty of Amagi, and again, it's a shameless plug from my end, is that we are a managed service platform with a lot of technology in R&D built internally, which gives us extreme advantages in terms of being able to customize, to create rapid solutions and deploy things much faster, just because we own the technology and we own the managed service platform ourselves. Okay. That's, that's sure. the advantage we have. Sure. Um, Basco, one last question uh, from the group. Um, please share with us the importance of IP transmission in the upcoming years and how cost effective it is. I think it's, uh, I, I don't need to look at a kind of a, uh, a crystal ball at all. I think IP is happening here and now. I think it's uh, just a question of time and when that we're talking about here. Uh, IP is happening in multitude of different fashion. Obviously, uh, IP inside studios is already happening from SDI. We are transitioning into an IP framework already. So that's the first step from an evolution from a traditional playout standpoint that's happening. Obviously, the moment you move into remote infrastructures like virtualized data centers or in public cloud infrastructure, automatically you are completely IP enabled. And what we're seeing is given uh, the, the SAMT 2022 standards that are all evolving, Obviously, there's a lot of interest, and given the bandwidth that's available across infrastructure, both in cloud data centers as well as private data centers today, and the connectivity is thereof, we're talking about gigabits per second connectivity already available in all of these capabilities. So essentially, you could technically run uncompressed streams across the globe today without having to worry about, uh, so you can actually have the best of quality as well as the capabilities of virtualizing your, uh, your infrastructure. So I think IP is the way to go. It's happening right now as we speak. I think in the next 10, 18 to 24 months, we see a lot of progress happening in the front. Uh, broadcasting is a world which is going to be living in a lot of legacy as well as new technologies. But all of the new deployments that we're seeing across the globe 
is all moving from an SDI or streams or analog or any other fashion that's happening, is all moving into a complete IP-based approach. That's what we are expecting okay. from, a, from an adoption standpoint. Sure, sure. Um, Bhaskar, thanks so much uh, for all the insights. And I think through the course of this presentation and also the subsequent Q&A, uh, I would imagine many of our attendees who are planning to look at um, starting to invest in a pop-up channel or even to look at uh, generating new revenues or to even test markets in, um, in areas where they are currently not thought about and looking at avenues on how to do it, uh, I think this will give them a very good uh, starting point to start thinking about cloud, start thinking about pop-up channels. Um, and it's interesting, but so, so feel free to uh, send me a mail sure. on, we could, we could share more of the experiences with our customers and with our thought processes with all the things we're doing. I'm more than happy to help from a, just from an understanding of how to go about doing a pop up channel. More than happy to help and consult and from planning processes. Sure. Just from a learning, share, sharing of a learning standpoint. Sure, sure. Thanks, Bhaskar. I think uh, for all the attendees, uh, we do have a recording of the session available. Uh, we'll send it across and also uh, send you the original slide deck and uh, with Bhaskar's contact information attached to it. So if you have any question, you can reach out to uh, either Bhaskar or to the Amagi team and we will be happy to answer all your questions. Uh, thanks once again and uh, our apologies for some of the slide freeze at the beginning of the session. Uh, I hope uh, it was still informative and then uh, we will bring, bring to you interesting content in the months to come. Uh, so do stay tuned to some of the updates from the Amagi uh, social media handles and our uh, general marketing campaigns. Uh, we look forward to engaging with you soon. Uh, thanks and take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, folks. Bye-bye.